A beautiful afternoon to you out there. Thank you for joining us on the program held the living on independent television. I'm Adesuwa Usa A few days ago, um, December 1st to be precise, was a day set aside specifically to create awareness on HIV AIDS, the scourge of HIV AIDS. And of course, um, this day started since 1988. It's been a day being commemorated since 1988 till this moment. But unfortunately, some persons still don't believe that HIV AIDS is real. They see it as a fluke. Uh, mostly maybe because people don't talk about it again at a particular point in time it was everywhere you can't shake hands you can't sit close to somebody and even when you suspect that somebody has it you see people running away from such a person what is happening today what is the journey so far as far as hiv aids is concerned do we still take precautions are we still afraid do people still get free treatment do people get some inventions? Do people know exactly where to go to? Do you even do tests anymore to check if you have HIV AIDS? A friend of mine was telling me the other day that um, somehow, somehow he knows his HIV status because each time the wife gets pregnant, you know, she has to run HIV tests whether she likes it or not. So with that, he's uh, usually very assured that he is okay. So. Today, let's talk about it once again to see if we can really do something to somebody out there who is still in doubt or for those who just don't, uh, who have this nonchalant attitude to diseases like this in our society and to see how those who are suffering from it are faring. Are they okay? Are they good? Are they getting what they are supposed to get? Is the stigmatization still there? This and many more, Dr. Barry Ojo will be giving answers to. He's a consultant family physician and is neck deep into this HIV thing. Happy to have you join us again today, it's Doctor. It's a pleasure this way. Yes, at all. all right, uh, World Earth Day, usually, World um, HIV AIDS Day, usually on um, December 1st, and this year's on fell on a, on a Thursday. So here we are talking about it. So the journey so far, Dr. Ojo. Yes, I uh, want to talk about back to the history of HIV. HIV mm -hmm. actually started, <clears throat> was discovered far back in 1981, so far back in America. So in 1983, when you had discoveries, and uh, the first time HIV was discovered in uh, Africa was somewhere in 1987, mm -hmm. and probably it was the HIV. So there are two types of HIV, HIV-1 and HIV-2. But you might, HIV-1 is more predominant. You can only find HIV-2 somewhere in part of West Africa. And that was discovered in 1987. Of course, that gave up that vent to the world is the in 1988, like you mentioned earlier. Actually, HIV virus is not a death sentence. It's actually it's already a category of uh, virus that's called a lengthy virus. And yes, it's virulent, it's transmissible. We'll come and talk about how it's been transmitted very briefly. But journey so far, so good. A lot of persons don't know the HIV status today. It will, it will be surprising for you, for you to know that even a lot of health workers don't even know the HIV status. So that's why we're using this avenue to let people know, oh, by tomorrow, by the next one week, you should know your HIV status. And it should be done routinely, minimum of twice in a year, if you are not a health worker. But if a health worker should do HIV test every three months, ideally. That's, that's, that's the teaching. But most importantly is that what are ways HIV can be transmitted? HIV can be transmitted through blood. HIV can be transmitted from mother to child. HIV can, most times, HIV is being transmitted through heterosexual and homosexual. In fact, in 1981, it was commonly seen among gay in America. But the first time HIV was reported in Nigeria was in 1986. And this is why the pleased to know that it was governed in the 13 years ago by far away in Calabar. Mm. So HIV actually has come to stay. But the only unfortunate thing about it for now is that there's no vaccine, unlike hepatitis B virus. But even when there are no vaccines, there are so many preventable measures we are going to talk about lately. But how does this go? There are four stages of HIV. You have stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. In stage one, you have what we call serial conversion. That period, of patient can be just be individual can be feeling unwell. Patient can just be feeling not comfortable, is being weak and all that. Then you now come to stage two, is the asymptomatic stage. This is where you see patients. Some patients are having uh, progressive weight loss. Some will be having on a stay fever, fever for one month, fever for two months. Some patients might be having cough. Some patients will now start feel, just generally feeling unwell. There will be weakness, myalgia, and all that. Then in stage three, that is where the HIV infection becomes established, where you have things like TB. Once TB sets in and other complications, you now talk about stage three of HIV. Then the, the stage four is the full blown AIDS, where the whole, there are now complications of HIV, up to things like a carpal sarcoma, which is a skin infection, like an ulcer in the leg. 
and so many things go all together. But in all this, a patient can go five years, ten years without knowing that the patient is HIV positive, without having much symptoms of HIV. So that's why we are saying that there's a window period, but the maximum period for HIV to manifest in terms of when you do the screening mm-hmm. is a period of between three to ten years. Mm-hmm. But that's not to say that as individuals, we should not know our HIV test. It is compulsory to know our HIV test. Okay. Then talking about stigmatization, stigmatization is always there in mo- most illnesses. Some persons don't even want to know. Some persons will not allow like you to know that they are diabetic. So but if you go to South Africa, South Africa is one country that has the highest HIV in the world. In the epidemiology, let me run away from that, over 78 million people have been affected by HIV AIDS. Mm-hmm. So this is what, what that means that it's an increasing end. And we're told recently that over um, f- Nigeria, HIV uh, uh, for that persons have increased by 4.5%. So that is where the issue of self-awareness is very important, so that people would know their status, like you talked about a man whose wife will go for antenata. There's all cause zero discordance. I've seen so, so many situations where the man will be positive, the woman the will be negative. negative. The woman will be negative, the man will be positive. So many, that's zero discordance. So if a woman, if a wife is more and positive and negative on the data, does not clear in HIV. So it's always good to turn on for the, for, for the test. Mm-hmm. But what are the features? What are the cardinal features to say, oh, this patient can be HIV positive? One, to be pro- unexplained progressive weight loss. Two, very commonly, there might just be some mild cough, maybe sore throat and all that. Three patients will be having continuous fever. I think it's typhoid. Maybe at times some patients come with TB. Patients will probably have a feature of pulmonary tuberculosis and do the HIV test is positive. Probably the upper HIV now become the opportunistic infection for the HIV, for the uh, the TB now become opportunistic infection for the HIV. Opportunistic infection means that because of the immunity that has been suffered, whatever we call the CD4 count, the CD4 cells are what is fighting immunity for us in the body. The CD4 count. Yeah, CD4 cells. So once the CD4 count is being affected by the virus. Opportunity first one will now set it like TB. There's things like hepatitis virus, even staphylococcus. A lot of patients come down with recurrent staphylococcus infection. So it would not be proper if a patient is coming to us to have some serially transmitted infection. HIV test is not done. So compulsory tests like retroviral screening, like we HIV test, hepatitis B and C are composing some of these uh, patients. Once they come with recurrent from place, of course, all admissions in every form of health facility. Once a patient is admitted to the hospital, of course, HIV is uh, uh, done. Then, more important, we're talking about blood transmission. HIV can control blood transmission. That's why it's always good to know the HIV uh, status of every individual, of, uh, that of you have both the donor and the recipient. So, it tells no more, irrespective of the age of this one, because I have seen uh, HIV in, as old as 78 years old. Then. Of course, maternal to child, mother to child, child transmission is very common lately. It's even on the increase. We're going to discuss all that. But again, it is always, you can get to sexual secretions. Of course, uh, 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 occupational hazard, those of us that work in the uh, uh, health environment. Yeah, of course, even those that go to the salon to do their hair and all that. So, so on those sharp objects, any type of those sharp objects, mm-hmm. circumcision, and any of these unscreened things that will expose the blood contact. And again, you know, you know at, at a point in time in this uh, part of the world, the awareness was like everywhere. Every corner you turn to, there's something to remind you about HIV AIDS. But it seems nothing is happening anymore no, but this one, it's in that matter. sector. It's not, it's not because people happening. don't talk about no, it's it. Not it's not we had NGOs everywhere no, those the, days, the, you the know. Good, good, but the, now the silence yeah, the good, is kind the, the of good, killing and making the, 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 the thing to spread the no, word. No, I agree with you, but the good news is that over 40% of people, people living with HIV today are on drugs. They are on the, the antiretroviral drugs already. And don't forget, all these drugs are supposed to be free. So that is the government policy. From is it free? From, yes. Once you present yourself to the right places, the drugs are given free. Even the investigations are, given, are, are, are done free of charge, from the liver function to the, the kidney test to the full block and all the urinalysis. All the investigations that will be done for the patient, a form is free. Places like PEFA and UBTH, or God, the, any of the government hospital HIV centers are free. So in our sponsor, that is the government policy. But you know in Nigeria, things can be done. But the drugs, the good news is that over 40% of people that are HIV positive are now on the medication. So, irrespective, and once a patient is already on medication, most of the time, the, the, the rate of spread is reduced. But what we are saying is that in this, in, we are using this forum to appeal to the public. Once somebody knows that the HIV status is positive, mm. it is always advisable not to go, because some of the risk factors to contract HIV AIDS is um, things like promiscuity, 
you know, infidelity relationships and all that. But we have seen a lot of situations where people know that they know the HIV status and they go ahead and they sort of spread the message. They spread the virus. That is the problem we have in this part of the world. And if you go to South Africa, I tell you this, so I've been there. Persons will tell you, I'm not sure you positive. They don't see it as a stigmatizing thing that you talked about earlier. And that is where the awareness is high. Mm. But again, this country has one of the highest AIDS spread. Although Africa has over 80% of HIV AIDS across the globe. But even at that, uh, American government, French government, a lot of government have contributed immensely to, in terms of drugs, in terms of support for people living with HIV AIDS. But let, let me tell you, the reason why France is most interested in HIV AIDS is that the first time the virus was isolated was in 1983. Somewhere in Madagascar, in east part of France, that was where the virus was eventually isolated. So, oh, this is a virus. And let me quickly say this. How does HIV come about? What is the deal of HIV? Some person will tell you HIV is in the Bible. They might have an idea, but you could not imagine scientifically. HIV is zoonotic, just like yellow fever, just like even your uh, Ebola. So it's from animal to man. So if you go and look at the history of HIV, it was those monkeys in those days in East Africa where they were intermingling, and that was how it spread from uh, uh, um, uh, animal to man. And again, we have a lot of bestiality. In the late 80s, where animals and men are not sleeping with animals, animals sleeping with women and all that. So those things increase the spread. It's far away in Eastern Europe and, of course, in, in, North, Af in North Africa. So irrespective of where your illness is coming from, you and I know that we all know that Wuhan, up to now, they have coronavirus. A lot of Nigerians don't believe that there's coronavirus. But HIV is real. So but the good news is that a lot of persons are on the drug, and it's never a death sentence. But what we are saying as health workers is that spread the message, don't spread the virus. I know so many persons, I've seen so many people, I've so many people, so oh, I know we'll die alone. This has spreading illness. And that is where the problem is. In, in Europe, for instance, there's a litigation. If somebody knows HIV is negative and it's positive, and it practices an unprotected I have to remember, six years ago in Germany, to be precise, a lady was sent to six years prison for knowing the HIV status as a person and went to agree for naked sex. They said, but in Africa, anything goes. So where are you this avenue to appeal to the public? Being positive is not a death sentence, irrespective of how the illness came. For instance, there are so many, like you talk about a man who's going to Atlanta. Mm. There are so many women. People don't like, who, people don't like running the test. I agree with you, but again, it is an appeal to all of us that are here to do the health profession. The patient can come to your hospital, cancel the patient, so called pre hiv cancer. You cancel the individual on the need to do a HIV test. Because if you know your HIV test today, it's going to save a lot of souls. I've seen so many patients, the man is HIV positive, the man is HIV negative. Then you intervene. And the family physician could intervene so that you don't look to spread because it can affect, the illness can affect the family. You know, as well, the family can be affected by the illness. Mm. So knowing your status is a plus, it's never a minus. So it is not, it is not, nobody is saying that, oh, somebody will say, ah, doctor, I will not do HIV test, I don't have it. That's not what we're saying. Because it goes along the management of that patient. For instance, the, 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 there are some drugs that you need to be given to that patient. What the patient is not HIV positive. Okay. That you might not know the kind of dose you want to give. That's why liver function test, for instance, is compulsory for HIV patient because that, the drugs are, are those, uh, the, there are so many of them. The, the, the nucleoside and the, the protons inhibitor, several of those HIV drugs. They, are, they could be very toxic. But the good, paradoxically, some of these drugs, one of the side effects, like the protons inhibitor, one of the side effects is weight gain. So once you mm -hmm. start taking the medication, it's you live a normal life. Weight. Because the drugs are going to chase away the virus to the corner. And it's a, virus, it's a drug that will be taken for life. And it must be taken on a daily basis, irrespective of your immune status. But in pregnant women, it is composed that irrespective of the viral load, they are going to start, if I the higher antiretroviral than what we have for the pregnant woman. So a woman can be pregnant, of course, carrying a fetus, of course, the baby definitely, most times, if you go to the HIV clinic or follow the Atlanta room, they, of course, the baby is going to become HIV negative because mm -hmm. she's on the medication, she's falling up there. If they look at it, what is the risk? If you deliver through God, one, the baby is in the womb, 25% chance of getting the disease. Exactly. Once the baby is being delivered, 50% chances of contracting the virus. Hmm. For the, once the baby has been delivered for breastfeeding, 25%. So what we'll do most times, when we know that woman is HIV positive, we we'll just offer zero section so that okay. she, will, she will be on the drug. And of course, I know that. HIV pregnancy is another story for another day. But this is interesting to women. It's very interesting to womanhood because once a woman person says, oh, woman is HIV positive, woman is pregnant, it doesn't mean that the future will come up pos okay. for, uh, positive. And again, we want to publicly say before I forget this one. If an individual is HIV positive, I've seen a lot of individuals, they'll say, oh, I don't want to get married. Who says so? You look at the social organization, you meet your likes. Okay? I've had patients who say, ah, okay, the husband is positive. Say, yes, I'm positive. We will meet in the HIV clinic. 
So you live a normal life. It's never a death sentence. It's not a stigmatization. <laughs> so why use this opportunity to have somebody to That would be very difficult for people to so do. Because, 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 because I run a, I run a program on radio. I have uh, quite a number of um, persons who are HIV positive. It discovered that even those who are HIV positive don't want to marry. That's why I just saying that. So we are not using that. You are not using that venue as a healthy living program to preach to them as family physicians that is workable, it's doable. So you look at your likes and get married. But the one who I don't know accept as a family physician is somebody know that HIV positive, speak to a marriage. It becomes criminal. I met a lady in 2009 in my clinic, in, my, in the hospital, the government, the government where I was working. Mm -hmm. And the woman was saying that, oh, doctor, please, my husband is not aware that I'm HIV positive. I said, wow. are you okay? You're talking to the wrong person. This is, this is, this is a criminal act. You've been on drugs and you speak to the matrimony? So, that's the, so that's, what, what, what so, will be the fate so, of such a man? So, well, that's what we are saying. So what, about, what we are saying this kind of uh, this kind of program is that there is a way out. You can get married to your likes, and you can live a happy life. So if you don't want to have children, you can do adoption. Who has said to HIV patients uh, couple cannot have birth and give birth to a HIV negative birth child? They can. It depends on the level that you they are there. They are still drug addicts. Yes, first you are there to the drugs. You are, you are into good nutrition. You are into decent lifestyle. The last can give birth to HIV to die negative. So what is it all about? I've, I've seen so many young men, 40, 43, they are, they are just shying away from matrimony. I said, look, there is a way out. But the one that will not cement to your mind is the one that will sneak to an innocent HIV negative, negative person. In, person. in the church, the church is, church is not hospital. So somebody can bring some confabulated results. But in my church, it's not possible. Because most of us are there, we are going to respring and respring. But don't, don't forget that this one. A child that has been given birth to just two days ago, they shall have test coming. They shall have test coming. No. The so called the polymer chain reaction. The one that the, the particular material they are using for coronavirus. So they will use polymer chain reaction and do tests for the child. For the child. The, if, if the antibody is there to be detected. So you can you can someone can only run from HIV. You can hide. That's what we begin to say. You can meet social organization. You can meet your likes. They are talking about breast cancer and all that. They will live your normal life. That's what the healthy living program is all about. To give you an avenue for a way, for, 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 for a safe land. You see that after this, my Lord, people are going to call us. Because it's realistic. HIV is not like Corona. HIV is not like every other normal pandemic. This is a virus that has been there even before 1980. It's just they now discovered it. If you go and look at the history, they now discovered it in 1981. Very common among homosexuals. Because it's very common among sexual fluid. Whether it's seminal fluid, whether it's vaginal fluid, whatever for the flesh. Somebody will say, whatever kisses. But it depends on the state. Well, if, you, if a patient is already, if a, a, an HIV patient is already in stage 3, okay. officially, maybe it has to be an artist. Oh. Of course, such things are risky. But what if, what if, what if there's, because again, the women stand less, more chances of contracting HIV than the men. Mm -hmm. For instance, in Nigeria, they've, they've overblown it to say that people who are HIV positive are more between 15 and 24. And this one, that's not true. That's the wrong epidemiology. If you look at, I know so many men are both 15 and HIV positive. Mm. Even more than this one. What they are saying that that group. population is more sexually active, more move around. But you know that even men above 50 are more active. Because 80% of the risk of transmission of HIV is just sexual intercourse. So but again, in, in the Europe and America, it is very common among gay. So you see that it has been established in the semen, semen that fluid, that they established in vaginal secretion, and of course in blood. So that's why I say that when you want to transfuse blood, even though you are in Jehovah's Witness, the issue is nobody you're going to take blood. What quality of blood? So you must be. No, you must be. You are names now. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that no matter if your religion is, we say don't take blood. That's mm. But that blood must be screened. I have never collected blood from in my in my in my end from a, I, I, most times I go to Gallup and go to the hospital, and it must be screened because one of the means of transmission of this illness mm. is through blood transmission. But those are less than 15 percent. So again, maternal to child you just talked about. That is very easy. If a woman is HIV positive and is pregnant, oh, go to good antenata, go to HIV clinic, definitely the fetus come and make it. Like all these means I'm talking to you about. They just did the, the dermatology team, which is charge of HIV, and of course the, the gynecology, they come together, put you on the drugs, and the child will be HIV negative. negative. So it's not enough to be a psychological problem. Is it in every case that, that, that the child will come out negative? Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. I'm talking about good antenata care. Mm -hmm. Optimal, optimal care. And that will go alongside the physicians and of course the gynecologist. Mm. So that at the end of the day, you be on that active drug. So but when you are in a stage of stage three, stage four, that might still be difficult. The chances of transmitting from ch mother, to, mother child to child is higher. Because the patient is already, already in stage three or stage four. But with the stage one or zero conversion, or the stage two of this automatic stage, well, you are good to go. It's so like when you are present yourself in a good antenatal coma. So again, generally, what we're saying is that HIV AIDS can never be a death sentence. HIV AIDS can never be a stigma. It depends on the way we interpret it. 
Because it's the sickness that hide us, that actually kill us. Mm. So we're appealing in this media that using this media to appeal to the popular, it is always good to know your initial status, number one. So it will also help in your dressing, aging, and your longevity. Because somebody is positive. At times, three, three months, four years, this guy is not aware. You don't have any of this symptomatology. So if you don't know your initial status today, then of course you will now see that the, the, the virus can be in the individual's blood and be eaten deep. Before you know it, the value, the maximum value for, 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 for individual to get down is anything below 500. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you don't wait for the virus to eat from about 1,000 down to 500. Mm -hmm. Addition will not be going down. So the message is that no your HIV status, prevention is better than cure. Better than cure. But it's also good that how do you will prevent? Of course, your lifestyle, you know, we're talking about ABC approach, as still for sexual activity. Of course, somebody's not in basis, that must, must be possible. <laughs> then be faithful. Of course, mm -hmm. you know how to use protective intercourse. Mm -hmm. Then once somebody is positive, you use, you go ahead to, to present yourself with HIV clean mm -hmm. very proudly. Most of the time, a lot of persons that are HIV positive, they are innocent to it. That's the truth of the matter of this one. I've seen a lot of uh, mono relationship. Yeah, one person is not sincere, and the, the innocent person gets the virus. So why are we now call the persons to talk to people about what are those in matrimonial status that you mentioned now? Who will now contract the virus? So we as physicians, we are to give you the safe landing mm -hmm. and give you the appropriate attention. All right, doctor. Thank you so much for that um, fantastic talk. All right, people. HIV is, is real. It's still with us. It's living with us. So all we need to do is be careful what you do and make sure you know your HIV status so that you can save so many people. This is all we're going to do today. We're going to see you again on Monday. Thursday we'll be on radio. And next week, Monday, we'll be back here in the studio to come and talk about something else regarding your health. We'll see you again on Monday. Bye-bye.